Okay, so we're now going to be talking about uh, RNS configuration. And in order for us to do RNS configurations, we have to remember four basic rules. Okay, number one would be to assign priorities. One to four. Okay. And we're going to give uh, the atom with the highest atomic number priority number one. Okay? So if we have a molecule that looks like this, We're gonna, the way that we're going to assign priorities is iodine is going to be our number one priority, bromine is going to be number two, three, and four because hydrogen has the lowest atomic number. Okay, now the way that you do this is you simply try to look at the numbers and see if the molecule rotates clockwise then that means that this is an R, that, that the molecule has an R configuration, okay? So this would be an R configuration, okay? If it rotates counterclockwise, we're going to have an S configuration, okay? So that's rule number one. Now rule number two says that if two atoms are the same, we move into the next bond. To determine priorities. Okay, what do we mean by this? Well, let's do it with an example. Okay, if we have this molecule in here, then uh, we assign priorities just, uh, just like we did uh, with rule number one, this will be our first priority in here. But then when we look at when we when we look at the next step, we're gonna see that we have a carbon atom in here and another carbon atom in here. Okay, so this is what rule number two is talking about. Okay, I'm gonna skip that for a second. And uh, we know that uh, one of them has to be two and then the other one has to be three. So that make that gives this atom the lowest priority over here. But then we have a problem because we are not sure which one is uh, is going to have second priority or third priority. So what this rule says is that you have to look, whenever there's a tie like this, you have to look at whatever is bonded to that atom. Okay, so in this case, this carbon is bonded to three hydrogens. And this atom is bonded to two hydrogens but it's also bonded to a CH3, okay? So in this case, this would be, this would have higher priority because it's bonded to a carbon atom. This is only bonded to hydrogen, so this will be our second priority, and this would be our third priority, okay? Now we do the configuration again, and we find out that this is R. Okay, so this will be this this molecule has the R configuration. That's rule number two. Rule number three says that if an isotope is present, the one with the greatest mass that 
takes priority. Okay, so we have a carbon bonded to a bromine, bonded to a Cl, and then we have a hydrogen and a deuterium atom. Remember, deuterium, it's a hydrogen with a, with a neutron in it, okay? Hydrogens by themselves do not have neutrons. Uh, the deuterium atom uh, does have a neutron, okay? So what this rule is saying is, well, first we have to assign priorities just like we've been doing all day. This will be number one, priority, priority number two, and then we have to decide uh, which one takes priority. According to this rule, the one with the greatest mass is gonna take priority, so that will be the deuterium atom and our hydrogen is going to be priority number four. Okay? Then, well, we start from number one and we go around. This would be an S molecule. Okay? This, this molecule has the S configuration. Okay? And now let's talk about the last rule that we have to keep in mind. And this rule simply says that if an atom is double bonded, we count the bond twice. Okay? So if we have a carbonyl like this, and we're looking at this carbon right there, this will be the same as saying that this carbon is single bonded to two oxygens. Okay, this is just what this rule says. Okay, so this double bond is the same as saying that this carbon is double bond is single bonded to two oxygens. Okay, let's do an example. look at this molecules we're going to see that well that this chlorine is directly bonded to that uh, carbon so this would have priority number one and then we have the same scenario where, where we have a carbon and another carbon so uh, one of this is going to be number two and then number three but this over here is going to be number four and then we have a tie in here okay we have a carbon in here and another carbon. So we have to apply rule number two, okay, which says that we have to move an extra bond. So this carbon is bonded to a CH3 and is double bonded to, two, uh, to, to an oxygen. This other carbon is single bonded to a, a CH3 group and an OH group. So which one is going to take priority? This one right here, okay? Why is that? Well, because this is double bonded, and remember we said that a double bond like that would be equivalent to two single bonds like this. This one only has uh, one single bond. Okay, so it will be one, two, three. This molecule is going to have the S configuration. Okay, and that's how you do stereochemistry. Now, there is a trick that we have to keep in mind. Okay. And this trick only we only apply it whenever your lowest priority is in the front. Okay? So let me write it. So the trick. Only when the lowest priority is in the front. Okay, so for example, if we have a carbon bonded to a Br, bonded to an iodine, bonded to a hydrogen, and bonded to a Cl, okay? What many textbooks tell you to do is to move the atoms around and mess with the, with the molecule. Well, you don't really have to do that if you know this trick over here that I'm about to show you, okay? 
what you're going to do is you're going to assign priorities just like you normally would. So this will be number one. This will be number two. This will be number three and number four, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to see that this is an R molecule, okay? But wait a second. We just talked about uh, uh, this over here being in the front. Uh, so all we have to do is, uh, is reverse the stereochemistry. So if this molecule is an R and you have the, low, the lowest priority in the front, you simply switch it to an S. So this is going to be an S. This, is, this molecule is going to have an S configuration. Now you only do it when the, whenever the hydrogen or your lowest priority is in the front. Okay? If it's in the plane, then you don't mess with it. If it's in the back, then you don't mess with it. Okay? Only whenever your lowest priority is in the front. Okay? And all you have to do is invert the stereochemistry. So if it's an R, it becomes an S. If it's an S, it becomes an R. And that's all you have to do. This is going to save you so much trouble. Because rotating the, rotating the molecule may be different, uh, difficult for many students.